So our original plan was to run an extension off this pole up about another 15, 20 feet and mount a radio on that location and shoot it all the way back around the bend another mile or two back the other way. But there were so many trees and buildings that were blocking our line of sight that we opted in the end to go ahead and set up an additional cell modem. And the cell modem looks just like this. That's is all it is. It's got a little SIM card that goes in there. And we've got an antenna that's mounted through the top side of this cabinet. This is what it looks like on the top side. And then we run an ethernet cable into our switch where we connect all of our components that are in here that we want to network to. And to further clarify, our original plan was to mount a repeater on a pole set up as a solar setup to keep it powered at all times and try to get around the spin. But even after doing that, we still had problems with line of sight. And with, in the state we have, when it's on state routes, we can get a cell modem coverage for 40 bucks a month, unlimited, which, you know, once you figure in the time to install a couple poles, figure out if you have right away, and the maintenance involved. I mean, 40 bucks a month, sell modem, get us online again. I mean, it just makes sense. So we're trying to bring this last signal, which is the last of this corridor here. We have seven downstream. This is our eighth signal. We want to get this onto the server so I can remotely connect to it. And the only thing stopping us right now is an issue with this controller. For some reason, we cannot communicate fully to it to get it online. So. It's one of the older controllers, so I'm just going to upgrade it with the new controller, and we'll see if we can get this thing going today. All right, get this new controller out, put this up here, it's a Siemens M60, it's going to upgrade this older Siemens M50 controller. We just need to take the timing out of there and transfer it into that controller. We're going to hook up a power cord to the controller and power that up. And let's get the laptop out here for our controller database. The process we're gonna take do here is take the timing out of this controller, place it in here, save it to here, and then we're gonna go ahead after that's done, that's the field side of it. I'll log in on the additional setup remotely at our server back at the office, and we're gonna see if we can communicate back to the new controller that will be in the cabinet. Now there's a feature in here that, in this database that can extract the timing out of there, convert it, and place it into this controller because this is a different setup. This is a Linux controller and taking it from there, from there to there does not always go smoothly. So I'm old school and I'd rather just go ahead and hand jam all the timing from that controller into that one and that way I know it's taken care of. And the main thing I'm concerned with as I'm going through here and updating the timing on these phases is to make sure my yellow and red times are set accurately for that direction for proper clearance times. Okay, there's the old file with the old software, the new file with the new software. Now I just need to go in there and go to the database menu and I want to upload all the timing, everything that's possibly in there, all the data, and transfer it to the laptop so I can save it. Before you get on me, I know I need to clean the screen. Noted. And while we're waiting for that to save, just to let you know, I, the reason I hand jammed, which by the way is a term we use in the industry for when we have to actually program everything in by hand, um, is because there's very little timing that has to be saved here other than the green yellow and red times there's no pedestrian crossing there's no coordination no preemption it's fairly straightforward so i know it's done correctly and so that's the reason that i went ahead and did it myself all right successful let's get rid of that and let's see here it's absolutely unreadable but it does say the correct software so now what we can do is take this controller pull this one out put that one in this place just go ahead and power this thing up okay it's still there we go let's see what happens okay it went 
to all red condition. Let's see how many people keep going. Okay, good. They're following. Where? There we go. So we went from a yellow to red, and now we're proceeding to normal operation. We'll need to set the IP address in this controller. Now I need to go to my laptop, which I had set up as a field side. Now I need to set it up to be the remote side, which means I'm gonna be logging into the server. So let's get started on that. Oh, look at that. I forgot I set this up previously for this location and it's showing connected. So I've got a green status for Illinois One and Industrial, which is where we're at. Now it's still showing the old software. So what I need to do is go in there and update this because this is actually the 522 software. This is 334. So if you look right here, I'm, I'm not connected or anything. I'm just remotely logged into the server and communicating through the cell modem to the switch and to that controller. So let's go in here. Let's just go to my configuration. I'm gonna to want to configure. Right now it's set for 334. Let's configure it to go to 522. Uploading access data. So I'm, like I said, I'm remotely connecting to it. Let's see if that changes to 522 for software version. Successful. Let's okay that. There it is, it's updated. We can save that now. That's awesome though that we, we connected right away so I know that we've got, we're right in there to the actual controller. Let's go to the database menu and what we're going to do is we're just going to save all that data now back to the server. Let's just go ahead and upload that and we'll let it do its thing. Alright, close this door up and that takes care of that. You know, that's just one thing I wanted to show you guys that it's a big initiative that I've been pushing since I've come here is to try to get these signals all linked up and uh, it gives me the ability to remotely tie in to the signal if I'm on one side of the district and the signal's on the other side of the district. It just really helps me out because I'm the only guy that is currently running this entire district from the signal side and so having that connectivity is really helpful. So. Anyway, hope that was helpful. Hope you guys learned something. I'll see you guys next week.